Brothers, that's what we've been singing. Bound for glory land. On the way, we have mop buckets and brooms to take with us. No, we're not leaving tonight. I hope nobody's going to go around right away. But at the same time, uh, discipline is the thing. Discipline. If we didn't get it when we were at home, let's pray God that you guys get it while we're among the saints. The scripture said, when your mother and your father forsake you in these things, we trust we can have the Lord take us up and teach us to do all things without grudging. Good parents teach their children at home. Straighten up your face and go do it like I told you. And get it done because you're not leaving until you do. And they learn. Discipline. Good parents. Do not take back talk, smart talk from children after they've been instructed. Because you're training them to be a wrong type of person. All right. So we want to learn that. What we did not learn at home is going to help us to enter the kingdom. The Lord says, train us up that way. Train the children up that way. But in case you don't, the Lord says, I'll get you. As soon as you come, so whenever we get you over here, we'll train you some things and teach you how to work among the saints. Amen. Not defrauding, as Brother Jim gives the exhortation. Not hiding out. Not leaving it to somebody else. Not finding a good excuse to not do it. Because if we don't do our part, we should feel bad about it. That we shoved it off on somebody else. He, he, he. That doesn't sound like a saint to me. All right. Here in Matthew, the seventh chapter, we have uh, one verse here that we need to read. And we know a lot of other verses, but we're going to read this one. And uh, we can apply whatever other verse we want to if fit it properly with this one. The 13th verse of Matthew 7 reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate. That's instruction if we don't read more. Enter you in at the straight gate. Now, straight, the world, uh, maybe, and uh, many of us have misused that word, maybe sometimes not knowing what it means and didn't bother to find out. But straight means difficult, exacting, narrow, particular. See? Exacting. It takes some effort to go in a straight gate. A straight procedure means do it right. If there's two ways to do it, do it right. And quite often that's the straight way. The exacting way. We have learned in our human practices down through life is to try to get it easy. We have some of the other overseas people say Americans are lazy. Now, we're not against efficiency. That's not what we being taught. It's being taught to do it not the lazy way. Do that which takes time. That, do it the way that is going to be right. That's, I think that's what we mean. Do it the best way, which is the right way. And which often takes pains and effort. The Lord said, do it, enter in at the straight gate, but we are in such a habit of trying to get away with something, trying to do it some other way. The Bible said, don't do that. Kind of some other way, uh, it's not going to be profitable for you. Enter you in at that difficult gate. And you know we're in a habit of trying to find the easiest way to do it. Efficiency is not getting it done fast, but getting it done as quick as you can. Right. The outcome needs to be right. Or it's not efficient.
If we have a choice, and most religious people choose the easy way, or all the liberties that they can find, searching to see how close to sin we can come without stepping over. Amen. When it comes to doing work, quite often we try to get out of it because it's difficult. Sacrifice is not well accepted until we have learned discipline. You know, it might sound foolish. Some of the, a lot of things Jesus taught sound foolish to the people. Like, how hardly shall a rich man enter the kingdom? They said, well, who can be saved then? The rich man can be saved. He has to go the straight way, though. The problem is with rich men is that they don't want to take the straight gate. They want to keep their money because that makes things easier. You don't have to pray near as much when you got plenty of money. That's right. You don't have to say please when you got plenty of money. You don't even have to say thank you if you got plenty of money. People, that's why people like plenty of money. The Bible's going to be hard for you to get to heaven too. The plenty of money because the things that cultivate in your soul of the graces of God may not be there. So we outsmart ourselves when we want to always take the easy way. We don't want to outsmart ourselves. You may feel like it's a play run over, uh, but it'll show up on your report card with God. Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in there at, and if we don't watch out, we'll duck in with them. And when you get in that gate, you're on the road. You're traveling. Yes, you are. You're gone. You're going. But you don't know where you're going. Many have taken what we call a shortcut to wind up in the woods and stuck in the mud. And some didn't get that at all because the road didn't go that way. You're talking about to the peak of the mountain. You're going to have to get out the road that goes up. Not the one just that goes round. Straight is the gate. Now the instruction and advice is enter in at the straight gate. Do it right. If you're supposed to be down clean, cleaning the floor on your knees, and you're out and get the biggest mop you can get, and the biggest bucket you can get, and slop up the kitchen, and say, all done. You might say, mop strings, splash dirty water, soak the floor, boards coming up, warp the floor, too much water. Well, I sure got done fast. Like people want to go to heaven, want a big mop, do it all at once. No, you're going to have to spend all your life going to heaven. All your life. You can't take Sundays off, Fridays off, Sundays off. You're going to have to spend all your life going to heaven. That's right. Enter you in at the straight gate. Now, the Bible let us know that the preaching of the cross to them that perish. Hmm. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. They just don't have that in their mind. That's not their philosophy at all. Doing it the hard way is ridiculous. I mean, it's taking pains and doing it right don't make sense. I mean, taking up a load. Well, esteem others better than yourself. That, but now that, everybody knows that doesn't make sense. Ain't nobody know better than me. And if there's, there's just a few, I ain't met them yet. I'm, I'm pretty good. We are the most avid fan. We look in the mirror and we like who we see and don't want to put it to any extra trouble. But the advice, the instruction, the admonition is to enter in at the straight gate. Take time, effort to do it right. The Lord said he wants without blemish, without spot, don't bring in your three-legged sheep. Don't bring in your sick mule, donkeys, whatever you got. Bring the, take time and bring in the best one. Straight gate. Now you know, 
it was Elijah had a, uh, a, a servant. You know his name? Gehazi. You know what Gehazi did? Because no one was looking at him, he snuck out, caught up with the Syrian captain, and took something from the man, and eased back in the home. He pulled a fast one. Gehazi pulled a fast one. Don't be like that. Don't try to outsmart God. There was a man over at Jericho, uh, not Jericho, but um, at the crossing of the Red Sea. Yes, it was Jericho. That he saw a goodly Babylonian garment and wedge of silver and wedge of gold. He thought within himself to make things a little softer for himself. He thought to get ahead of the game. So in the midst of the fighting, he quit and ran and hid something in his tent. Now he's ready to take it easy, except the spirit was in touch with old Aiken. It didn't help him because the Lord's keeping score, you know. No, he said, no, that's not going to work out. That's not what I tell you to do. There was a couple of people, you know, Ananias, Sapphira. They didn't want to take it the hard way. They wanted to take it the easy way also. So they done a little bookkeeping fraud. You know, you're supposed to, the bottom line is supposed to total out. And they made it match up. Not they didn't, they didn't match up. They wanted it to appear to match up, but they couldn't. And when they talked with Peter, he said, did you sell it for so much? I was ex examining the books. You know, we got to give up books to examine them now and then, too. The auditor of the Holy Ghost decided to check it over. He said, Peter, this book ain't told up right. What's the matter here? From what I can understand, they sold this house. Maybe for 20000 but I only see 10000 down here. But they said 20000 They sold it for 10 they said 20 But 10 went in their bank account. Something matter to these books. They don't balance. And so Peter said, hey, tell me, did you sell this house? Yep, yep, that sure did. Oh, well, you lied to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said you didn't. We could try to pull away some things on God. Okay. Offering up blemished sheep. The internet's a straight gate. Go ahead and do it right. Why are you doing it? Do it right. Okay. You know it makes the book look bad when you have to go back and erase all that red ink. Take out the blue and put it in the red. Just tell the truth and do what's right. You don't fool nobody. You can't fool anybody in your, into thinking you, you know, top grade saint of God. Jesus says, enter into the straight gate. There's a wide gate. Now, if you go into the wide gate, with this uh, uh, gun hole gone. But don't pretend you fool yourself that you're keeping the stringent, strict word of God. Down your heart, you know, that you're short. You don't make it up with imagination. You make it up with prayer. Some fasting. And some giving yourself to devotion. Don't pretend to enter in the straight gate. Don't pretend to enter into the straight gate. Enter in that way. Because straight is the gate and a narrow is the way. Go in the narrow way. Well, I can get more in if I go in the wide way. Now, I can take everything I got with me if I go in the wide way. Yes, sir, I got room for that. Some of them wild clothes back in the closet if I go in the wide way. I got room for this and I got room for that. I can take my whole uh, buggy in there because I ain't so bad. You know, I ain't too bad no how. 
I really didn't need to be saved, but I thought I'd better go through it because they said so. But I ain't too bad. No, you too bad. You won't fit on the narrow way, not by that stuff. And God said, take the narrow way. You don't need a whole lot of room, just you. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life. And that's where we want, that's where we're going. But before we can get into life, we want to lead to life, we're going to change some attitudes. We're going to be saved with attitudes that are negative. Attitudes that are, the, the Word of God spends much time preaching against it. Much of the Word of God tells us not to do what we're doing, but we're on the narrow way anyway. We say, do it anyhow. So we get on the narrow way and then we can elbow it out a little bit, make it a little wider so we can carry our attitudes with us and our spirits and our behavior that's short and our tongue that's maybe long and there we go down the altered road I made it wide enough for me well let's consider that most are beautiful in the sight of the Lord and the death of his saints because they're beautiful people we want to live that way we want to live that way we don't want to be fussing and murmuring. I will say here, enter you in with grace. Let's go up on the highway in. Get the movements low, gets too heavy, the Lord will send you some help. Don't even want to choose the, long, the, the narrow, the, rock, the broad way. We don't choose that. The Bible said, let your, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block. We don't want to let our liberty, the Bible said, be a cloak of maliciousness. We don't want to claim we have a right to this and a right to that and all this kind of right and this and that and then all it's just a cover up. Because you don't really have a right. You ought to be treated right, but you don't have an inalienable right to be treated right. If you go into heaven, you have to take some wrong too. Because you're living in a world with people that are wrong. That means you're going to have to suffer if you're going to make it through here. We're living in a world of trouble and all that give God they shall suffer. Tribulation. So don't worry about backsliding because people are not treating you right. Mm. No, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take up the cross. No. What have you been fussed about? Well, people don't have to do this. this, 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 this. I say, listen. Now listen. The scripture says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Jesus did not earn persecution that he received, but he didn't let him stop him. He was on his way to Jerusalem. Face set like a flint. Spit on him, slapped him, everything else. He kept going. Lied on him, belittled him, embarrassed him. But he had a death to die. And it's not right. Probably said it, a prophet perished outside Jerusalem. He kept right on going. Nobody said it was going to be fun. But some days you have to suffer some things. To please God, you're going to have to accept mistreatment. To please God, because the opposite is to fight it. And to fight it, it'll make you look ugly. A saint out there fighting. Who are you fighting for? Well, you shouldn't have to say that. There was a saint one time, and daughter-in-law. Didn't treat her right. Now, I don't know what the outcome should have been, but uh, the daughter was out, out there going to push her down or push her or do something, and she and, and the saint had the hose. The saint was using the hose, and the lady was mad, trying to get in there, trying to get. The, oh my! Well, whatever might have been just, it didn't look like this saint was trying to flood out this daughter-in-law out there in that yard. It looked like a fight out there, I guess, about. But we want things that seem right as they look right. In as much as possible, live peaceable with all men. If any way you can avoid it, put the hose down and go in the house, shut the door. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. But keep smiling. Not to make anybody mad, but the fact is that you have a pleasant disposition because you're saved. Enter in at the street gate. When we're making a decision on what we want to do about this or that, don't forget what the Lord said. 
do it right. I mean, take that narrow gate. Take the tough road if it's the proper road, the right road. It has the right effect. Take the narrow road. Take the narrow gate. Well, says so. Don't look so hard for you to make it easy for yourself. Try to get out ahead of other folks. Try to leave the burden on somebody. Train your children right. Here we go again. Right. Look at them and see if you're pleased with the way the job you've done. If you don't, you need to apologize to God. Are you satisfied with the product that you pre yeah, that you're presenting to the world? Some of us now have been saved long enough to have our children are coming of age now. What did we do? What have you wrought? What have you wrought? Did you say, oh, I don't care because you didn't want to go through the trouble of it? You know, oh, my, uh, my wife, oh, my husband. You can blame it on them because you don't want to really take your responsibility. Enter in at the straight gate. Some of you be bothering, or be uh, getting involved with grandchildren for too long. I hope they don't learn any wrong habits. If it didn't work well on your children, don't put it on your grandchildren. Do it like God say. Save yourself some trouble and do it just the way God said do it. That's right. Insist that you have respect from your children. You cannot guide an individual who does not respect you. Do it the way God said do it. Enter in and do it the straight way. Amen. Do it right. Amen. When there's so much sin and so much wickedness around, there's a great tendency, an opportunity to do it, do it any kind of way. Give said abide by the same rule. Uh -huh. Mind the same thing. Sometimes, you know, we feel like that we can do better than that. If the rule is taught, we should abide by the rule and not decide to concoct some behavior of our own that you don't know whether it works or won't. But if we best to do it, we got to do it. Nevertheless, Whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. We'll have good success in our Christian meeting, or holiday meeting, or 25th meeting, or fellowship meeting, or winter meeting, or whatever we call it. We'll have good success if we all walk by the same rule. Esteem others better than ourselves. That's right. Do unto others as we have them do unto us. Amen. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. That's the rule. Let us uh, walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Don't you know that to keep down uh, attitudes among us? We should be having no attitudes among us. We should take the liberty to feel like I don't have to be bothered with her or him or them. Or sit back and laugh behind your hand at somebody? No. Church, body edifies itself by love. Don't let your liberty get you in trouble. That's right. Sometimes you feel like you can do what you want to and you're going to talk back to the wrong person. And God's going to smite you in your conscience. And if that don't take care of it, he might do further. Our liberty... Stops for others to start. We don't run over folk. You don't ask to go home early, as somebody say, when you can very well stay. And then you don't complain because someone else is permitted to go early because they have a need. Let's love each other. And we guard one another. And don't try as a way to walk somebody down. Complain because somebody has a privilege that you didn't get. How small are you in your heart? 
Is the preaching of the cross foolishness to you? You will never have the church that God summoned a glorious church as long as suffering is too much trouble. The glory that has come to the church because, is because somebody suffered. The most they get out of the bed at uh, 3 a.m. and go out and pray, even if they weren't going to preach, they were out in the woods praying, that God would bless the day coming with the saints. Now that's, a, that's some real cross, isn't it? Oh, that's a real cross to throw that cover back and hold out. Sometimes it ain't nothing wrong but do. Get up and go pray. They're preaching of the cross to them that perish. You know why they're perishing? They're esteeming the great things of God as minor. The preaching of the cross. A meek and a contract spirit, the Bible says that is a of God of good of great price. Let it be an ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of the Lord a great price. But how many people think that's a great price? To have people telling me what to do and won't let me do this and that. How many of you folks on the job, uh, you insist on being spoken to like a gentleman? Wait a minute, you say that to me, right? What, you're dealing with the boss, let's get the job done. In your homes, don't want anybody to tell you what to do. The Bible said despisers of dominion is not going to make it into heaven. You may have the meekest individual in the whole shop telling you what to do. You won't do it because of pride. You talk back. You give them a hard time because they're meek. And if they come from a few tough and then letting you have it, then of course you want to go file a grievance. So you just can't be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Let's humble ourselves down and get in step with the Spirit of God. That's right. So that we can stay on the straight and the narrow. So the straight is not talking about not bent. It's talking about it's difficult to be there. You know, the old football player, he might start on one end of the field. He's got a straight road to run. And if nobody get him, he can go a straight, S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. He can go that way. He can go straight. If nobody grab him, chances are he's going to have a rough road. And I can get his elbow broke and his knee broke or something. But he's trying to make it to the other end, and we've got a devil that's trying to stop us. See? But stay on the right road. You're not a crown unless you strive lawfully, the Bible says, so don't be running in the gutters and ditches. By the same way, let me see here, what does it say here? Brethren, be false together with me and mock them, which so as you have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Enemies of the cross of Christ, they're going to take side trips, they're going to cut corners. They're going to do things that got no business. Amen. Things that the saints of God do, are not supposed to be doing. They're going to do it. Why? They're going to try to find some liberty in there somehow or another because they're lazy and because they're indifferent and they don't have a real burden to see the glory among the saints of God. They're going to do what they want to do because that's the way they are. And they're enemies of the cross because the cross is their enemy. It's their enemy. I don't do that. It's hard. I ain't going through all of that. Oh, I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> I'll tell you, the enemies of the cross of Christ. Who's in? Oh, wait a minute. I better, should I read that or not? You all got your Bible? What do you say? Those that don't like to suffer. Those that don't like to do it right. Those that bring a reproach at you almost, I mean, to do what they want to do. Those who are seen in places they ought not be and dressed the way they ought not be dressed. Because the straight way is too inconvenient for me. I want to go to heaven like Ananias and Sapphira, but I don't want to pay the price. I do, I, I do. I sure I want to go to heaven. I'm talking about going to heaven. Whose end is destruction, whose God is the belly. And watch that serving the great belly God. Self, in other words, self. Self. Me. And any time the flesh gets the victory over the spirit, you're not going to spend much time on the straight in a narrow way. Too much trouble. Undisciplined, untrained, different. Riding along on the outside, hitching a ride to heaven. 
But when you go through the gate, the gate may be too narrow for hitchhikers. You'd like to be scraped off. Hmm? Help us to pray for ourselves. I do. I'm going to pray for myself. Hey Amen. It's not something to make you uh, have ulcers and all that. That's not the way we deal with it. The main thing is just be honest. If we be honest, then you, you're not going to kill yourself. Just be honest and pay a day's work for a day's pay. That's it. Don't talk back. If I said don't talk back, how much? Why do you got to talk back? I said, be, do all things without murmuring and disputing. Well, then why you got to murmur and dispute? Hush. Hmm? Love each other. Thank God. Love and fame. Well, they don't bother nobody. In a sense. Nevertheless, we're to we have already attained us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. It keeps down schism and splits and division. When we all mind the same thing and walk by the same rule. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But then we can get along. Yeah. Amen. You're not you're, you're own, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. God is in charge of the church. He's the head of it and we get and we're governed by the word of God. So we don't say things and do things and smart talk and answer and things like that to make the road rough for somebody. All right. We're going to make the road rough for somebody. We're all members of the same body. We don't claim liberties that we don't have no, have no business with. That's, as Peter said, using your liberty for a cloak for malicious. High behind you, calling liberty, calling I'm saved as you are, and all that kind of stuff, excuse to do what you got no business. Suffer yourself, the Bible said, to be defrauded. It's better to fall a little short on personal rights than to go beyond, the Bible said, and defraud somebody. That's right. Better to peel one more potato than the third over there. I peeled many of you did already. This is yours, buddy. Yeah. Pastor's telling me about the, his phone rang one morning about 6, 5.36 o'clock. What's the matter? Thought there was a problem. What was in the kitchen cooking? And this says it wouldn't help peel potatoes. Well, I'm sorry to wake you up by the hand. I'm sorry to wake you up by the county. I'm sorry to wake you up by the I'm sorry to wake you up, but how come this sister thinks she don't have to peel no potatoes? Now, I peeled nine already, and she had not hardly even started. What do you, what? what? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you know, yet Colonel <laughs> and Walker Smith, yet Colonel and Walker Smith, peace. Peace is the key, right? It didn't happen among us. I don't think our saints would do that. But it was told for the truth. But yeah, that, that would happen. We got called in early in the morning. Don't know how late he stayed up at night. Maybe counseling and talking, but before he could get a good night's sleep in the phone rang because somebody wouldn't work in the kitchen like they're supposed to. Thanks to God, better to go beyond than to fall short. But if they're preaching the cross is foolishness, then that don't make no difference. You teach that all you want to. People are not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Esteem others better than ourselves, but that's a hard lump to swallow. How in the world am I going to... Are you sure the Bible said that? Esteem others better than me? Well, go ahead and get the other sweeper. There's a sweeper left. I'm going to wait to see if somebody else get it first. Uh, do we have anybody in here that, you know, a little bit too elite to run a sweeper? I wonder if we ask for a raise of hand. How many in here have never, never, never ran a church or got a sweeper? We well, never a church sweeper. <laughs> no, I ain't got no sweeper. I ain't got no sweeper. Some take an attitude like that. That's, we, that's the kind we need to get out. That's the kind we need to go through the fire and humble. God resisted the proud, but he gave grace to the humble. That's what the scriptures say. That's what the scriptures say. Esteem others so we can get along and so we can get the job done. All right, the straight is the gate. Get the straight gate and go in it. So now I'm trying to choose a real sweet job, trying to choose the easiest job you can find. The Bible says take the straight one. Now that takes some suffering. Yeah, I'll be crazy to pick that job. I hate it. 
I'm glad that all of us don't like the same thing. Some of us, you know, can do some things that others don't like. As long as we can find balance and they're good. But when you're pushing it off on someone, knowing. Take the shortest job, the easiest job, and the biggest piece of chicken. Well, I was fixing to get that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now I was fixing to get that. Put it back. What about when I'm time picking jobs? Hey, you can have it. I've got to go to the restroom. Hope they're all gone when I get back. Attitudes. Let's have some right attitudes. Don't look for the easiest way. You're going to surely get in trouble when you're looking for the easiest way. You're surely going to have a problem with your salvation when you're trying to find a way out of difficulty all the time. You're surely going to have problems. It's not that kind of way. It's a sacrificial life. The easiest thing for anybody to do, I guess, would be sin. I just don't do that. Don't do sin. It's much easier to tell a lie than to tell the truth, especially if the lie might show you, spare you some trouble for a while. And that's why people lie. Easiest way out. Not, pro not profitable. Don't do it. Not even in this life you get in trouble with lying. That's right. You suffer chance. All right, well, we found in the scripture a verse that said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. Don't think the Lord when everything is not just tearing you up, tearing you down. But there comes a time when we need to do it the straight way. Straight way. We don't need weak saints and duck it. Always ducking something, always ducking, and you'll never grow in strength ducking. But what you ought to be doing. Ducking it. Some kind of way to get out of it. See? And just growing weaker and weaker and weaker in your soul. Whenever there's a trial, whenever there's a test. And that's how God strengthens us. We duck the test. Avoid the trial. And do it some other kind of way. And stay the same or weaker as we go. Lean this in our soul. Because we don't want to develop the grace to do what God wants us to do. Never get any stronger. The mother used to tell me about them the folks she knew. They were trouble since they've been that size. Been trouble. We're going to get out of that some of these days if we'll take heed to the Word of God. The Word of God will get us out of that kind of attitude and behavior. Oh, yeah. Let's stand. Let's stand over God. Thank God he hearkened unto the trumpet. They said we won't hearken. And stayed weak. And got weaker. Did you start out for heaven or not? Sister Harry, you know Sister Terry? She said you want to go to heaven, don't you? Sweet. She called darling. You want to go to heaven, don't you? She just told me. You want to go to heaven, don't you? Well, she going to tell you darling and burn, lay that judgment on you and then you're up and squirming and squeezing and going on. She said, but you want to go to heaven, don't you? You know, you're not going, taking the easy way out. You're not. You're not going to get anything done. I don't mean that we're not talking about mechanically going around trying to make things hard for yourself. We're talking about doing what is right. Quite often it's difficult. But do it right anyhow. All right. What's the number? 253. Don't because it's hard. Ask for grace. Save, yes, Lord. Oh, we're going to be Christians. Yes. We're going to hold our tongue. Yes, Lord.
I'll write the remaining things need to be said before we go. Uh, Sister Betty? You won't be here Friday? You'll be ducking work, right? Yeah. Sister Betty, who's you I sang Christmas songs. They haven't been there now. They ain't teaching them much. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, come up here in the front so we can see how she can count them. But come up in front if you're going to go caroling Sunday. Come on up here. That's the little children. Oh, they come on up if you want to. That shows some boldness. I mean, who else wants to go? If you don't want to go, go. Come up here now. No, we don't want your sour face. What's looking all sour? They're going to go to the rest home and sing or somewhere. One of these days, you might be in the rest home. What time does Savannah? What time? Alright, I'll get him back in time. You will go? Oh, you go. Okay. They look like they decided to go. Well, you have any adult escorts? Some escorts? Teasing. Again, you come. See so you now how many you need. At least this many. This is going to rehold. Rehold. Handbagger. Sister uh, Beverly, I mean, excuse me, Sister, great sister Melanie.